So how can we build the best possible models given long training times? So today we're going to focus on three efficient techniques. And we're going to build a use case that kind of integrates all three. So we're going to focus on transfer learning to reduce our training time. We're going to focus on multitask optimization to reduce our tuning time. And we're going to do black box image augmentation to essentially efficiently increase our model performance. So we're going to go through a brief overview of concepts. I know most people in this room have seen all or at least two of them before, just to make sure we're on the same page. So to reduce training times, we're going to do transfer learning. So we're, there are many ways to do transfer learning. So we're going to focus on two of them. One is fine tuning, and the other is feature extraction. So with fine tuning, you essentially use a pre-trained ImageNet 1000 to initialize your weights for the model. And then you continue to train the model from that starting point. And then for feature extraction, what we do is we use the ImageNet 1000 pre-trained model. And we use that pre-trained model to essentially dwindle down our input data into important features. And then we train only the last fully connected layer. Uh, so for image augmentation, our augmentation will be very simple. It'll go through transformations such as horizontal flip and random cropping. And we'll also play with color jitter, which is kind of fun. Uh, so we'll be playing with saturation, hue, contrast, and brightness. OK, so moving on to multitask optimization, which is probably the one that most people here have not heard of. So let's just take a step back and talk about what a hyperparameter loop looks like. So essentially, what we have is we have SIGOPT, which is going to be our hyperparameter platform that we use to tune our models. It'll provide us suggestions for stochastic gradient descent. We'll take those suggestions, run through a training loop, and then return our model's validation accuracy. So we'll be doing this in parallel uh, because tuning takes a long time. Um, so jumping into multitask optimization, what that means is you really just want to start with a very simple idea that partially trained models can give you information about your hyperparameter space for your fully trained models. So we're going to take a look at this academic examples from Klein 2017. So essentially here, Klein is using MNIST and a basic SVM to kind of prove this concept that when we train a partially trained model, on MNIST with SVM, we're able to learn aspects of the hyperparameter space that are important. And that aspect is the, the blue, the yellow is not important. Um, and so essentially, we see that the fully trained model has the same area of global optima for hyperparameter configurations as the partial one. So essentially, we'll be leveraging this efficiency and learning from smaller tasks and partial tasks to inform our fully trained model. Um, so just keep that in mind. So today we're going to be focused on a case study on efficiently building high performing image, cl image classification models. So the data we'll be using is Stanford CARS, very old data set. Um, it's approximately 16,000 images and 196 classes. And the label is CAR make and year. So the complexity of this data set really comes from, one, the small number of data that we have, two, the high number of labels we need to accurately classify, and three, the close proximity of these labels in the label space. And what I mean by that is like, not only does the data have Honda Accuracy 2011, I just called it Accuracy, Honda Acura 2011, um, but it also needs to be able to classify Honda Acura 2012. So there are very minute differences that we need to accurately identify. So the architecture we'll be using is ResNet. Uh, so back to multitask optimization, which is going to be our strategy for tuning our model. As I previously said, there is this partiality involved, which means we have to define the partiality, which brings us to what is our partiality. So we're going to split are essentially the number, the percentage of epochs. So our low cost model would be 10% of the epochs, medium is 50, and full is 100. 
with full number being 35 epochs. And we're essentially going to be looking at identifying what is the best training and tuning methodology for our data set and our model. And so we're going to explore the two different transfer learning techniques and to tune or not to tune, that is the question. And yeah, no Shakespeare. Um, and we're also going to do a little bit of architecture search selection where we compare ResNet 50 and ResNet 18. So for ResNet 50, we're going to use it as a feature extractor. Um, deeper networks, traditionally better at extracting features. And then ResNet 18, we're going to use for fine tuning. OK, so these are the hyperparameters that we're going to tune. So we're going to tune stochastic gradient descent, just like your classic, what you would tune any day. So this back to our optimization loop. So SIGOP is going to provide our stochastic gradient descent parameters. We will tune, tra sorry, train our model and then return our model validation accuracy. And SIGOP will provide for us another set. And so we're in this like iterative loop where SIGOPT is learning which configurations work best for our model, and our model hopefully increases with time, increases in accuracy with time. Um, OK, so what are the results? So we found that, surprisingly, that uh, fine tuning a shallower network, just straight up without any optimization, drastically outperforms feature extraction as a strategy for this data set. And what that really means is that the pre-trained model that we use, the ImageNet 1000, is actually quite dissimilar to Stanford CARS. Great thing to learn, more about your data. So, so then we included optimization as a strategy. And what we found is when optimization has more knobs to tune, which is our fine tuning our model, it is able to give a higher boost in accuracy in model performance than in feature extraction. So we're able to get a 4% boost for our fine-tuned shallow network versus just a 2% boost for our feature extraction of the deeper network. And again, these are characteristics of our data set and our model that we used, um, but it just goes to show that when you're modeling, you want to try everything you can. Um, OK, so multitask. And what does multitask look like in this scenario? So as we saw earlier in their slide deck, um, partial cost should really help you understand essentially where your full, full cost tasks should sample. So what we see happening in this GIF is we see that small cost tasks actually explore the parameter space, with medium cost tasks being peppered in when the algorithm understands which areas work best. And we end with a small amount of full cost task in like the specific region that our Bayesian optimization thinks is the global optima for this tuning strategy, which is great. So what did misclassifications look like? So most of the misclassif misclassifications we had for our most highly performed model, which is the optimized fine-tuned ResNet 18, is they're mostly close calls. So going back to our data's properties, we have essentially the same car in different years needing to be identified as different labels. So we see that this model actually falters when it comes to that. Um, and this example is the Aston Martin. Um, which they all, both look the same to me, so you know, whatever. Um, so the second is unconventional angles. So it doesn't do well when it doesn't, when it isn't able to see more of the car. So here is a classic, wonderful example where it misclassifies a Hummer for a Volvo, which is great. Um, and the third is background clutter. So we see that when the image is noisy, it has a problem focusing on one object and classifying that object. So we hypothesize that these problems actually come because of the nature of the data set and the fact that it makes it a very good, challenging benchmark data set. Um, so the next question we asked was, can we improve these results? Yes, OK. So <laughs> generating synthetic images with multitask optimization is 
how we decided to try to solve this problem. So going back to our hypothesis, we hypothesized that because the data set is challenging in its properties of, its, of how many images we have per class is only 0.5% of the data is actually very low. So, um, so essentially, we introduced image augmentation in this simple feedback loop where SIGOPT is now suggesting hyperparameters for our image augmentation process as well as our training process and then we return our model's accuracy back to SIGOPT. And then we should see this iterative loop again benefit our model's accuracy over time. So what did the image augmentation process look like? Very simple. Each image, each original image was augmented only once. That was because of computation costs. Um, and it goes through horizontal flip, and it'll go through color jitter. So color jitter is composed of saturation, hue, brightness, and contrast, whose parameters we'll get from SIGOT. And it'll be resized to 224 by 224 and randomly cropped. So at the end of this, what we have is we have, we go from 16,000 images to 32,000 images half of which are augmented, half of which are original. And for our training, we'll use a mixture of both, so our model sees a healthy amount of noise. But for our validation, we only use the original images, because what we care about is how is it performing on the original data. So again, these are experimental designs. So this time, we're going to try to beat our previous baseline. So our previous baseline was essentially the fine-tuned ResNet 18 with optimization that performed at 87% accuracy. And we're going to include image augmentation in this process to see if we can beat that baseline and by how much. So this is our baseline, as I said, 87% accuracy. Um, this is our new tuning loop. So if we recall, our old tuning loop only included parameters for stochastic gradient descent, but now we also introduce this aspect of image augmentation, which we will use these SIGOP as a black box Bayesian optimization strategy, specifically multitask optimization, to give us parameters for color jitter as well as stochastic gradient descent. So, so what we actually see here I think is quite interesting, where we can leverage a downstream supervised learning technique, so our model's classification accuracy, to inform an upstream unsupervised technique, which is image augmentation. Typically, image augmentation, you kind of like fuck around and like see like which parameters work best for you, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then do your modeling, and you're like, oh, OK, that actually made it worse. So here, we're actually bypassing that human in the loop um, and allowing Bayesian optimization to kind of inform us what to do next, which is pretty cool. Um, so these are our, our hyperparameter tuning parameters. So again, we're going to be doing stochastic gradient descent and image augmentation uh, through color jitter. So the results are pretty nifty. Uh, so we get a 10% boost from just using ResNet 18 fine-tuned and a 6% boost from ResNet 18 fine-tuned with an optimization strategy attached to it, um, which is great. So we're essentially able to leverage our supervised technique to inform, our, to inform our unsupervised technique pretty well. So that kind of leads us to the question to that's great, Magna. What did the augmentation images look like? So, so I think this is pretty interesting. So essentially, we see an original image where like things are essentially how we would see it to an image where everything is hyper vibrant. We essentially see contrast to its extreme and saturation also being very highlighted. So we see boundaries being more of a thing that the that we can see in the augmented image. Um, and the parameters are able to bring objects in the background, as in row two, where the car is in the background of the banner, to the foreground. Um, we don't really know why this is useful for the model. That is obviously for future work. And there's a lot of work being done in model interpretability and robustness, and if these features are like transferable. Um, 
we don't really know. It just is kind of a cool thing that happened. Um, yeah. So what did misclassifications look like this time around? So we still had a bunch of close calls, and we still had problems with difficult angles. But we seemed to be able to solve the problem of background clutter. And we hypothesize that it's actually because using a hypervibrant image where contrast and these boundaries are defined, the background is actually more understandable, and the boundaries between the objects are actually more clear. Um, yeah, so, for, so these could probably be solved by introducing rotations into the augmentation strategy and probably just using more than one augmented image, but also future work. So why does any of this matter? So just by looking the first half of our experiment with just transfer learning and optimizing transfer learning, we see that efficient optimization paired with efficient training techniques actually allows any team to build high-performing models given resource constraints. And then when we introduce augmentation, we see that including optimization earlier in the modeling process, we're actually able to better get better performing models as well as like understand more about our model themselves as well as the data that we're using. So I'm from SIGOPT. We're here today and we'd love to talk to you. Uh, we're at the booth outside. Um, thank you. <laughs>